Hey, so I took apart the go-kart and I'm planning to, I guess, redo it because I didn't like the way it was designed before in the uh, electronics. So in this box, I'm going to try to make it a little cleaner because before I actually had this uh, reversing solenoid uh, soldered on diodes. I had the, uh, had the diodes soldered on there directly and I didn't like that. So I'm going to do this right this time. Right now, I'm just trying to design the box to figure out what's the sleekest or most efficient use of the space and this time I'm going to try to incorporate my uh, I guess like you call it BMS but this one's a little fancier it actually will tell you when it's full there's little LEDs on here that'll light up blue when it's ready so I desoldered all of my connectors because I'm probably going to make this internal to the box which I think makes more sense it'll have better cooling it's got a big old uh, heat sink on the back that's cooling all the MOSFETs in there so my plan is to take my ba this is the battery negative input terminal I'm gonna put a, little, a hole over here or somewhere in here I can use one of the existing holes there's tons of them and just feed ground from the chassis itself because that's where the negative terminal for the battery will be hooked up uh, straight into that feed over there and this is the charging and load output um, port so this will go from this is a negative so it'll go right up to my all tracks controller up here and this is battery negative input into here and actually I am wrong I'm sorry so this is negative as I said it's coming out of the BMS unit it's gonna go into my fuse up here this is a uh, 400 amp fuse holder and as you can see, nothing's really attached in here. I just kind of have it sitting. Uh, this is my amp meter and voltmeter that handles up to 600 amps, I believe, of current. So it can read that. And so you put it into the one terminal and it comes out of the secondary terminal. And that'll go into my Alltrax controller. So that way we have a full loop here, a little bit more safety because we're hooked into our fuse system so it won't over pull or over draw in the event of a short circuit, which would be catastrophic. And right now I'm just trying to figure out, I have a solenoid. This is the, the main, I, I guess it's called a contactor, uh, the main contactor for the unit. And... I'm trying to figure out where's the best place to put it because it's going to be in the, my negative, or sorry, my positive lead into the system. So positive comes directly into my massive on-off switch here. So it's great for you know emergency shutoff or just giving power to the entire system. And when it's turned on, it'll cast right into this contactor here. I'm going to swap this because before I had this mounted crazily up here and i just think that looked stupid but so i gotta take this uh, diode here flip it to make this the, ne the positive this the negative and then this should operate according to the little uh sorry let me zoom in here according to the little schematic on here it's both it's it can be reversed there's no reason in my mind that it can't based on that little picture there so we're gonna do that i went to lowe's today and I picked up this. Let me try to get it in here. Uh, this cable here contains four wires. They're, they don't have to be very much. They're just, um, here, I'll zoom in. There we go. Yeah, so we got a blue, green, red, and a white. And I got 60 feet of it. Not that I'll ever need to use that, but it's nice to have a wire for $3. <laughs> they, uh, they screwed up. Uh, and somebody, uh, they cut way too much for somebody. And it was 33 cents a foot. They reduced it to 10 cents a foot. Then the cashier didn't know what to do. So he made it 5 cents a foot. <laughs> he ended up paying 3 bucks for 60 feet of uh, cape, uh, bundle of wire. And I'm going to rewire all of that because I didn't like the way everything was separate. Each one of those green wires is uh, to my on-off switch under the steering wheel. Or... It's a, it was a dual purpose, forward, reverse, and on, off switch. And my goal is to try to get a battery lid because I know it is available. I just got to find a retailer that would actually sell it to me. As you can see, I only have half of one here because I bought these off eBay and one seller had that and the other one didn't. 
Uh, I still have the same gear ratio. I think it's an 84 uh, spur, the big old guy on the bottom, the big gear. And the pinion on there, I think it's a 15 tooth. And it's great. It, it's, it's really, really fast. And I never thought it would be that fast. It's extremely torquey. It doesn't get super hot. So it's operating well within its range. I clocked it at 40 miles per hour with the two of us in there after I reduced it. So my guesstimate is that it was probably about 50 before, 50, 55 miles per hour before. And I think that's a lot better than I ever thought it would be. If anybody's wondering, the duct tape is not doing anything to hold structurally together. The duct tape is my alternative to putting in mud flaps or some sort of wheel well to keep all the mud from flinging up at me while we're trying to drive it. We drove it through the backyard. There's a big old ditch back there and got covered in mud. So decided there was, should be a way to fit around that. The charge port on the side of this guy, it's from a golf cart. I forget what it's called. Uh, I can look it up later, but it's a great way to just, it's the same plug I have on my lawnmower actually, the, the riding lawnmower, the electric conversion. So I can just use the same charger across all the devices here. <laughs> so aside from that, I got this box, the actual electrical box as a whole for really cheap. I think it was $15 on clearance at one point and it has worked out fantastically. So what I do with it is I attach it straight onto the back of here and mount it with some metal or sheet metal screws and it ain't going anywhere with that attachment. I am also putting in this nice pot box next time. It will actually have a on-off switch, so a clickable switch. I'm going to take that forward reverse switch under the steering wheel there and put it on here as well. And I hope it will be a lot more clean than running all these separate wires under the unit. And I'm going to try to take the throttle cable, those two, a black cable with the two prongs sticking out of it. That's hooked up to a potentiometer or a forklift throttle. Uh, maybe I can't get it. Uh, there's a forklift throttle down here. And he's got seven wires coming out of it, but I only need the two because my Altrax controller doesn't really recognize them anyway. But that is the goal at the moment. I'd also like to push it farther back because right now it's kind of squished in there trying to get your foot in there at that weird angle in alignment with that. So... These are the goals. <laughs> we'll see how many of them I reach. Uh, I got all my stuff on the floor here. Got, I think it's two and zero gauge cables down here. So it's got plenty of horsepower behind. So that's the, uh, that's the go-kart. It is totally a work in progress again. And I hope to have it done shortly. I'm waiting on parts from Amazon. All right, hopefully I didn't miss anything. As you can see, I have my workbench set up again. It's a new house and all of the RC cars. <laughs> That's it.